All right, what is going on, Banter fam? Welcome into today's edition of In The Game. I am your host, Hustle. And as always, we're going to be diving deep into the crypto gaming markets. And today I really want to talk about uh, some projects that are A, affected by the Ubisoft news that we covered yesterday. Um, we'll kind of give a few projects that are tied to Ubisoft in some sort of way. Just keep your eyes out on some things coming up. I want to talk about some news with Phantasma partnering up with Network. Uh, for their cross-chain metaverse. I think that is huge news. And then we'll also get into another cross-chain NFT blockchain that will be powering a lot of metaverse projects in the future. And then I want to talk about some projects that have some flowing in-game economies right now that you can actually go in and start earning right now. We'll look at some gameplay. We'll look at the economies and some ways you can step into these games and start making some earnings. Even when the market is down, these in-game economies still function. So we'll bring you all that and more in this edition. Without further ado, let's get in the game. This is Crypto Benta, this is Crypto Benta, this is Crypto Benta. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it, guys. And I want to start, uh, we'll take a look at, like I said yesterday, we talked about on yesterday's show, NFTs are coming to Ubisoft's Ghost Recon Breakpoint game. This is a AAA shooter, and this is really big. Obviously, Ubisoft planting their feet inside of NFT gaming is going to be probably that first mover that sets the tone for other studios to get involved in the future. Uh, but what can be some actionable items or some projects to keep your eyes out on that are involved in this news? Well, we have a couple partners with Ubisoft and including where Ubisoft will be launching their NFTs on the Tezos blockchain. I think this saw probably the biggest jump yesterday from this news. As you see, that is all from the Ubisoft news. Um, so Tezos did really well, but when I'm looking at gaming coins, I'm, I'm not really looking at these top 40 projects. So it's one of those things where Tezos isn't really a gaming coin. It was affected by the Ubisoft stuff. Uh, but there's other projects out there that are tied to Ubisoft that I think are lower market cap and maybe a little more juicy value. Uh, you take a look at Ultra. We've spoke like we've spoke about Ultra multiple times, guys. But Ultra is the steam of blockchain gaming. They are partnered with Ubisoft. Eventually, there will be a lot of developments coming out with Ubisoft and Ultra. So that is number one. Ultra is right in line with Ubisoft. And then another one. This is a little more low key project. Eighty million dollar market cap. This is a leaf. Uh, and I don't even know if I'm saying that right, Aleph, Aleph, uh, but the ticker sign is A-L-E-P-H. Right now, it's up 13% off the news. But if you look at the all chart, we're not really looking at a massive pump here. And this is a cloud computing and file storage platform. And that makes sense. If they're going to be storing these NFTs on the blockchain, Ubisoft might need a solution for, file compu like for cloud computing and file storage. And they are a part of the Ubisoft Entrepreneurs Lab platform. So they bring in a lot of startup projects to start integrating with Ubisoft's projects. And as you see front and center, season six of the Entrepreneur Labs, you have a leaf here front and center. You go over to Ubisoft and they describe it as a distributed cloud platform that provides serverless, trusted computing services, file storage, and database hosting to its users. You could definitely see why the distribution and the organization of these NFTs on the blockchain, the cloud computing capabilities, that it would take to run these nfts i think you're going to see something coming up with a leaf and ubisoft and not to mention a leaf did tease on their twitter pretty big news stay tuned from the ubisoft team releasing their courts news so in my opinion i think that a leaf and ultra are two lower key plays that are involved with ubisoft that haven't had that mainstream news come out with ubisoft integrating something on their platform front and center Obviously, the news with the NFT was very mainstream. None of these have had that like blow off top news type style cape like event. And I think that upcoming, you might see that with Ultra and Aleph. 
Uh, so those are two projects you could be actionably taking action on for Ubisoft. And then I want to talk about this. So this was big. Once again, we had this come out about 30 minutes before the show. The gaming world seems to love dropping news right before we go live here. Uh, Phantasma did partner up this morning with Metaverse Project Network. They will be bringing their cross-chain gaming blockchain, layer one NFT blockchain, over to the network Metaverse to create their cross-chain Metaverse. Uh, I really love this development. Obviously, a lot of people are wondering, what would be the need for Phantasma? A lot of these projects might be able to build a backbone of their own. This proves it right here that a Metaverse project, the scale of network, is looking to outsource the layer one capability uh, from Phantasma. And I really like this development and Soul getting involved here with network. And it just shows that there is a legitimate use case for their smart NFT blockchain uh, that will be powering these in-game assets. And if you're not aware, Smart NFTs are basically what will level up your assets. Smart NFTs will be like when you're leveling up a gun and then you transact it on the blockchain, that is going to be how you transact a smart NFT. Excuse me. Uh, so when you're transacting a smart NFT, you can get it at a level one when you receive it, when you mint it, then you can level it up to a level five and transact it through the blockchain and be able to actually get monetary value back for your leveled up asset. So that is what a smart NFT is. And they will be implementing their blockchain right in the network metaverse. So I love this development. And you also take a look at the diluted market cap here. It's the exact same as the market cap, guys. That is what you want to look for. There's no diluted market cap holding Phantasma down. At 229, I think that Phantasma is a solid, solid entry point for the long haul, especially with the diluted market cap. They're only going to integrate with more uh, projects and they're only going to integrate with more uh, block metaverses across the space. I really like Phantasma. It's taken about a 33% dip here from about 250 to 220 or 350 to 220. Uh, and now it's up to 236. So good to see for Phantasma. And I really like that news. And let's get into another cross chain NFT blockchain. And that's Infinity. So Affinity right now, look at this chart, guys. This chart is right where you want to be buying in, to be honest. This chart is right where you want to be accumulating. And this is a cross-chain NFT uh, blockchain once again. But what this project has separated itself is they are backed by Engine. So Engine built Affinity, and it is on Polkadot. They're vying for a parachain at the moment. Obviously, Engine is a top 100 coin, top 75 coin, $2 billion market cap. Engine has announced a $100 million metaverse fund for Infinity. And if you don't know, they are going all in with Infinity. They want an engine ecosystem integration, metaverse projects building on Infinity, gaming, NFT dApps, decentralized infrastructure, and pioneering projects. Uh, so the metaverse fund is going to go towards all of those things from Engine into Infinity. You take a look, there are games out there that are absolutely talking up for Engine's Infinity platform. The next generation of games needs a next-gen DeFi platform, which is Affinity. And Affinity already has 70 projects, 70 projects lined up to adopt Affinity for its usability, speed, scalability, and low environmental impact. As they say, the Engine $100 million Metaverse Fund did get launched. And some of these projects like Lost Relics, Age of Rust, Division Network, and Pluto Alliance are among those projects. I really, really like Affinity, and you take a look at its chart, it's really just like if you're looking to buy in at a chart, that is a type of chart that you want to be buying. We're literally here near the bottom. And Affinity is going to be a multi, multi, multi billion dollar project whenever it's all said and done. 70 metaverse projects lined up, and it's only the beginning for this project. So I think this is safely a top 75 coin when all is said and done. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it a lot higher than that. Um, Affinity token, really, really bullish. It's built by a successful project in Engine, and it is on Polkadot. So if you see a Polkadot narrative in the next alt season, I think like or whenever alts start running again, if Polkadot starts running, you could really see Affinity do major, major numbers. Uh, and then I want to kind of get into some platforms, guys, that are games, like some actual games. We've talked a lot about utility this week. We've talked a lot about the backbones of these projects. We've talked a lot about distribution, the blockchains, all that good stuff. So let's get into some games and let's get into the, the horse racing games. There's two that I want to talk about. One that has a live game right now. So when you take a look at the horse racing industry, guys, 
why is a, pro a project like D-Race getting a valuation of $170 million? Uh, so why is a project like Pegaxi uh, have a fully diluted valuation of $400 million? Well, the money in the horse racing world, guys, is major. The sport is worth $100 billion with over 1.5 million people employed in the industry with over 10 million horses in the U.S. Uh, so when you take a look at a project like D-Race, and especially at the chart, you're taking a look at a discount buy. If you're looking to DCA into these projects long term, they are backed by Animoca Brands, one of the biggest backers across the entire space. Also, Animoca Brands released their earnings today for their last quarter. Absolutely amazing. They are killing it. And if you don't know, Animoca Brands is basically the top of the line as far as blockchain gaming investors. Uh, so features of D-Race are going to be able to race NFT horses. Uh, and with those horse races, obviously, it's like a betting feature uh, we're going to be like at a virtual horse track making wagers on your horses and racing for profits in a play to earn nft horse racing ecosystem and you'll also be able to breed your horses so if you have a female and if you have a male horse you're going to actually be able to combine those horses and be able to breed and make a baby horse and then you're actually able to use that horse in future races so i love the economy and the style that these horse racing metaverses are going for and that is uh just what D-Race is looking to do. It's a realistic metaverse that's going to be flowing with capital. It has a breeding system. Everything about D-Race is bullish. You take a look at their roadmap, project uh, beta launch in Q4 of 21, full platform launch Q1, Q2 of 22. So a lot coming up around the corner. You take a look at their economy, very strong economy. And then their backers, obviously, Animoca Brands, AU21 Capital, among others. I really love D-Race. And I think that this is probably the leader in the horse racing metaverse right now. But there's one project out there that's actually has a, a project live right now, and that is Pegaxi. So Pegaxi is a mech style horse racing game where the horses are called Pegas, aka Pegasus. Uh, and Pegaxi is a active economy right now, a horse racing game with futuristic mythological styling. The horses are descendants of the mighty Pegasus. And in this game, you participate in player versus player format races to win in platforms uh, utility token VIS, which is vigorous. Um, so you take a look at the features. You have racing, breeding, and renting. And that is the biggest feature to me. This is what we'll get into in this economy. If you're looking for an ecosystem to be able to earn passively, right? A lot of people's um, kind of, I don't know, I, I would say hiccup with the gaming spaces well, I'm not a gamer. I don't I don't really get inside of these economies and start earning. I don't know I don't know that I'm going to be able to go compete with the best players. Pegaxi makes that super easy with the renting platform. So if you're wanting to be a scholarship manager, you can literally go right on the platform for Pegaxi and lease out your horses, rent out your horses for a couple of different revenue splits and we'll cover that here in just a second. They also have a mobile app coming up that looks super clean, guys. That would be like the load up screen of their upcoming mobile app. That would be in Q1 or Q2 of 2022. But then you take a look at the actual format of the game on the mobile app. It looks super clean. Right now, the game is just a 2D game. But this will be the future 3D game on mobile apps. It will be on iOS and Android. And like I said, guys, this is an active economy where you can rent out your horses. So you can do a fixed rental system where they will be able to pay you in the Pegaxi token to rent out your horses for a set amount of time, aka 2,000 Pegaxi for 60 days, and they'll be able to earn off of that horse for that time while they're leasing it from you. But there's another method, which is more of a pure scholarship style, where Pega owners can put the Pega in an open rental marketplace to gain passive VIS income. VIS is the in-game token. It is vigorous. Uh, it is 14 cents right now. That is the main earning token inside of the game. Uh, but you take a look at the profit share model. It's where you can basically be a scholar manager. You could split the profits 50-50, 70-30, 60-40 with the player and be able to actually have a true revenue split and a true scholarship style system. And you're not having to do anything but literally lease out your horse. So I love that system. And I have it pulled up here. So you can go into the renting system. We'll just refresh this get the latest horses here available. So you can rent out a horse for a day for 55 Pegaxi at the current price. That's about $27. Uh, for reference, my first day playing this game, I made 400 of the in-game token, the VIS. And at 14 cents, that's about 50 bucks. So 
you would pay that off with a horse like this at 55 peg axi, for example, based on the vigorous earnings, the VIS price. So you can definitely earn that in one day. These are very, very affordable for rentals. And some of these rentals go up to one week, one month. Uh, so you can put your horses up for rental if you're looking to earn that way. Or if you're looking to just hop in and earn, you can lease out these horses. And there's not a lot of share profits because these get taken up very quickly. Obviously, there's scholars out there looking to earn without having to put a ton of money into the ecosystem. Uh, so the share profit option uh, is where you will be able to basically just take an, a share of the profits from the horse owner uh, from that horse. So I really love that. They have a breeding system and their racing system, the marketplace. Everything looks super clean. And I'll just go and even show you. I'm currently renting out a horse. So as you see, my unbreakable horse here is being rented out. And I've found this to be very solid. Like I rented my horse within two minutes the first time I rented it. Uh, and now unbreakable is being rented. I did a set fee. I'm going to try the profit sharing. Uh, but this is something you could definitely scale up long term. And if you're renting out your pegas to players who are playing this to earn, that can definitely be lucrative. And the November stats, there are people participating in this economy, guys. They have 16 or 15,000 new baby pegas. There's 20,000 circulating pegas. There's already been 200,000 races run with 35 million VIS tokens uh, already generated into the economy. So I love that. And that is the pure in-game token. Uh, total rental listings, 27,000, with already 25,000 successful rentals taken care of. So in my opinion, Peg Axi provides an opportunity to get inside of these economies. The horses, you can get in around $1,300, and you can probably pay that off within a month or two easily, like easily, uh, if you are participating in that rental system. And then they also are partners with Good Games Guild. I'm very bullish on Good Games Guild. Uh, Good Games Guild is located in Indonesia and have partnered with Pegaxi to assist the game's growth within Southeast Asia. Uh, and if you don't know, the CTO of Pegaxi also owns and is part of a company that has a scope of 55 million gaming users in Vietnam, where play-to-earn gaming is one of the biggest across the entire world, uh, places like the Philippines and Vietnam. Some players are able to literally earn a living off of these scholarship programs. Uh, so you take a look at the popularity of Vietnam GameFi, Peg Axie finds itself on the second ring here uh, as the popularity scale for Vietnamese play to earn games. So I really like that. There's global adoption behind that. And then it takes us into our last topic of the show, and that is Thetan Arena. So Thetan Arena is the hottest game in the blockchain right now with a product live. Like the game is hot right now. You take a look at the numbers, insane numbers, guys. They did 27 million in volume on their last box sale. 4.5 million users within a week and a half of release. Uh, Discord is 200,000 members and friend problems is something they had. They did, so, uh, they resolved that. Um, so the very first week update is super bullish, 4.5 million users in one week. I think that speaks for itself. But you take a look at the in-game earning economy. You're earning the Thetan coins currently at 30 cents. And a lot of people have wondered, how do you get in on this game? How can I start earning? I'm a, I'm a noob. I, I have never bought an NFT. I have never gotten in these games to play to earn. So you want to go into the thetanarena.com. You want to click the marketplace. You go into the marketplace and you can sort by item. You can go most expensive, latest, et cetera. Uh, if you're brand new to the game, you would want to scoop the floor. Uh, right now you can get a character for like 115 bucks. You can literally pay that off within a week easily. Um, with the in-game earning economy, if you are playing your maximum games uh, and et cetera. And then you can take a look, you can scrape the floor on these heroes and each of them do have different earning capabilities and different amount of games that they can play for earnings. So uh, you're going to see a lot of these heroes either rising in value or falling in value based on how many earnable games they've played. Because each game, each player has an earning limit for how many games it can play. So keep your eye out when you're looking on the marketplace how many games does it have left? But even with the declining price of the Thetan coin, and people have to remember, look at SLP, Smooth Love Potion and Axie. It does not have the best price action. It is, it is literally a token that can be continuously generated for the in-game economy. But that's going to keep the health of the Thetan token, the THG token, very healthy, uh, the main token for Thetan Arena. Uh, so this keeps them separate, and there will be a lot of sell pressure on the Phaeton coin, without a doubt, because it's the in-game token uh, that you will be earning. But you'll be able to go in here, 
grab you a hero. And then whenever you load up the game, you can get with a squad and you're able to go in here and play multiple different game modes. So this right here, guys, is Superstar. Uh, Superstar is kind of like if you know Halo, uh, the Halo series from Microsoft, then you would know the uh, game Oddball. Oddball where you're running around and the player who possesses the ball, uh, you're getting points for your team. The team that holds the ball, the more of the round wins. Very simple. So in this game, the object is a superstar. Uh, the superstar, you want to get your hands on the superstar. And as you see here, uh, the character down here in the bottom left, my teammate is working towards these stars, earning the stars with the superstar in their hands. So what you want to do, it's first to 50 points wins. And as you see, we are getting close to the 50 mark here. But Superstar is a very easy game mode to play with a team, in my opinion. If you play together, you're able to kind of take out a couple people, get the star, take possession of the game. And this is one of my top modes to play with a team for earnings, in my opinion. Um, I've been able to earn quite a bit through this mode. And another mode that is very popular, and this is very popular among other games as well, is Deathmatch. And that'll be the next one we see. I think we're literally about to clinch the win here. Yep. And as you'll see, this is the in-game interface. So it'll show victory. It'll show your earnings for the game. It'll show your score for the game, who got the MVP. And then it credits you a little bit of XP for your rank. And as you see, it credits you your Thetan coins. So I got 7.45 Thetan coins. And as you see, I have about 563 Thetan coins when I recorded this video. Um, so this is obviously pre-recorded. But then we take a look. We go into the deathmatch. Deathmatch is as it sounds. The team with the most kills wins the game. Uh, but there are kill bonuses. So as the game goes on, one kill can equal more points. In my opinion, this game has so much going for it, guys. It's brand new. It's still... It's diluted is still 5x under Axie. Its actual market cap is about 20x under Axie Infinity. And if you're comparing these games, there is no competition that this game blows it out of the water. And I think that with the massive adoption down the line, especially in countries with scholarships like the Philippines and Vietnam, and, uh, Vietnam, for example, I think that these countries will massively adopt this game for scholarship programs whenever those are active. And I honestly think that Thetan Arena is going to be massive in the future. And this is the lead mobile game in the space, guys. This was the first iOS and Android blockchain game to really come out and set the tone, set the standard. And I think that a lot of games are going to have to kind of chase what Thetan Arena has now set in the space. And if you don't know, this is by a successful mobile game company in Wolf Fun Game. Wolf Fun Game basically took their successful Hero Strike game and rebranded it for the blockchain. It is a successful model that is absolutely working already. 4.5 million players and counting. I love this game. And all you have to do, if you focus on winning, guys, winning is where the earnings are. If you get into this game and you're actually with a team that is serious about earning, you just need to focus on winning and you will earn. It does not matter how many kills you get. It doesn't matter your score as much. If you are winning the games, you will get those win bonuses and be able to maximize the in-game economy. Um, so that's really what I wanted to cover today, guys. I wanted to talk about Pegaxi and Thetan Arena's in-game economies and kind of show you how you can get started, how you can pick up a horse, how you can pick up a character and start earning inside of these games. We've talked a lot about coins already on the show. We wanted to get inside of the game and show you how you can actually take advantage of these economies and start earning and actually start putting some assets to work. Uh, and especially when the market's down, guys, you don't want to keep buying in. If the market is down, you can DCA into some projects. But if the market is in a state like the other day, when the sentiment was super bearish, we were just free falling, alts were bleeding, everything's down 40%. This is the way to go. You're going to get inside of these games and you're going to be able to earn these tokens while they're down, by the way. And then the next bull run up, some of these tokens will actually have gains. And those tokens that you're stacking, like the THC token potentially, or the THG that you're accumulating and investing, uh, you might be able to actually see great gains in these periods where you're down in the market, but you're earning the in-game tokens. So that's going to do for today's show, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the in-game economy side of things. We'll be back tomorrow with some more projects as always. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more, guys. 500,000 and counting here for the Banter Fam. Uh, and like the video if you enjoyed. It helps us get the show out in front of a lot of new viewers just like yourself. If you enjoy crypto gaming, if you're bullish on this sector just like I am, help out the show, get in front of more people. Like the video, comment below. I'll be back tomorrow with another edition of In the Game. Uh, play well, my friends.
look forward to playing some of those games. Good job, Hassel. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, Thetan Arena is super fun. And I've been doing that horse racing game. It's, it's actually like profitable. Yeah, I look forward to earning, um, as you say, when the market's down. Yeah, that's that's the whole that's the whole hedge against the bear, man. Play to earn is going to be so big. There we go. Catch you on the next one. Absolutely, Kyle. I appreciate you.